Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about biotic components of an ecosystem where ecosystem is combination of abiotic and biotic components. So today we will discuss only biotic components. Ecosystem is combination of abiotic components and biotic components. Biotic means living organisms and abiotic means non-living things. These two factors are continuously interacting with each other and these interactions are taking place in two forms. First form is energy flow. So how does exactly this energy flow between these two factors? It flows through a food chain and food chain is sequence of eating and being eaten. Let's understand how does a food chain get formed. This is a very simple example of food chain where rabbit is eating plant and rabbit is eaten by fox. This eating and being eaten sequence is making this food chain. If you look at these arrows, you will find energy is flowing in one direction. Energy is flowing from plants to rabbit and from rabbit to fox. So energy flow is unidirectional and uh, it is non-cyclic in nature. Energy cannot flow in opposite direction. Let me tell you a very interesting fact about energy. So the amount of energy which is passed to next level. So suppose energy is flowing from plants to rabbit. Only 10% of energy will be passed to next level. So suppose plant had 100% energy. So rabbit will get only 10% energy after eating plant and this fox will get only 1% of energy after eating rabbit. So this is a very interesting fact about energy flow. Let's understand what is the second type of interaction taking place between abiotic and biotic factors. That is nutrient recycling. Nutrient cycling means movement or exchange of organic and inorganic matter between abiotic and biotic factors. Now what is happening if you look at this food chain again, what is happening here? This plant is absorbing nutrients from soil. These nutrients are in inorganic form. Plant is absorbing nutrients and performing photosynthesis process. After photosynthesis, it is making carbohydrate molecules or uh, converting inorganic form into organic form. And this organic matter will be passed to next level through a food chain. Now what happens at any level if one of the organism dies, this dead organic matter will be converted back into inorganic form. So suppose this rabbit has died, the dead organic matter of rabbit will be converted back into the inorganic form by decomposer or you can say by the process of decomposition. This is nutrient recycling or you can say the second type of interaction which is taking place between abiotic and biotic factors. If you look at this word trophic, here trophic means nutrition or nourishment. Every organism has different nutrition needs. So based on that need, all organisms have been divided or positioned at some different trophic levels in food chain. So suppose this is a food chain. This food chain has been divided at different uh, trophic levels and each organism is placed at different trophic levels. So let's talk about producers and consumers first. Producers are producing food. So because they are producing food and food chain is starting from food, so here producer will always be at first trophic level and then comes the consumer. Consumer will either consume producer or consume other animals. So consumers will always be at second, third or last level of any food chain. Now comes the decomposers. What decomposers are doing? They are basically decomposing or decaying the dead organic matter which is coming from producers or consumers. That is why they are present at all trophic levels. So if you look at this food chain, here you will find the grass which is producer is at the first trophic level. Rabbit is eating grass. It is at second trophic level and fox is eating rabbit. It is at third trophic level. Now decomposers are present at all trophic levels. So suppose this rabbit has died or plant has shed some leaves. These leaves will be decomposed by decomposers which are present at all trophic levels. Now let's talk about producers in detail. Producers are also called as autotroph. 
Here word auto means sells and trough means nourishment. Auto trough word signifies that producers are self-nourished and capable of making their own food. That is why for their food need they are not dependent on any other organism. Now let's see auto troughs are basically using two types of methods to make their own food and based on these two methods auto troughs can be divided into two parts. First is phototroph and chemotroph. Let's understand phototroph first. Photo means this photo word is coming from photons. So it signifies that phototroph organisms are using sunlight to make their own food. Whereas if you look at this word chemotroph, this chemo word is uh, signifying chemical compounds. So these chemotroph organisms are using chemicals to make their own food. So that is the basic difference between phototroph and chemotroph. Both of them are autotroph and making their own food. Phototrophs are using light as energy source, whereas chemotrophs are using some chemicals as energy source. Phototrophs are basically using process that is called photosynthesis and and chemotrophs are using process that is called chemosynthesis. This is the basic difference between phototroph and autotroph. Now let's see in photosynthesis process phototrophs are using water as reducing agent or you can say water is used as electron donor in phototroph organisms whereas chemotrophs are using other reducing agents like hydrogen sulfide or molecular hydrogen or ammonia. They are not using water as reducing agent. Apart from that the other difference is uh, these phototrophs are found at places where ample amount of sunlight is present because they need photon to initiate the process of photosynthesis. That is why they are found at places where there is abundance amount of sunlight. Whereas chemotrophs do not require photons. These chemotrophs do not require photons. That is why they are found at dark places like deep sea water or you can say volcano vents. These are the places where chemotrophs can be found. Now let's see what could be the classical examples of these two type of autotrophs. Green plants, algae, cyanobacteria, these are the some classical examples for phototroph. These organisms contain green pigment which is chlorophyll. This pigment is helping them absorb photon and making them perform photosynthesis process. Let's see what could be the example of chemotroph. So archaea, methanogenic bacteria, sulfur iron bacteria, these are some examples of chemotroph because these uh, do not contain green pigment chlorophyll that is why they cannot perform photosynthesis process rather they are performing chemosynthesis. So this was all about producers and their basic job is to make food. This food later be consumed by other consumers or other living organisms in ecosystem. So let's talk about consumers. Consumers can be divided based on uh, the type of food they are eating because some consumers are eating plants and some consumers are consuming other animals as their food. So based on these two types, consumers can be classified as herbivore, carnivore and omnivore. So let's quickly talk about primary consumers which are herbivores. These primary consumers are consuming plants or they are feeding on producers. That is why they are called herbivores. If you look at this food chain, you will find this rabbit is eating plant. That is why this rabbit is primary consumer or you can say herbivore. Secondary consumers are the consumers which are feeding on herbivores. So here this fox becomes secondary consumer. Then third type of consumers are there which are feeding on secondary consumers. So here in this food chain if lion is there and lion is feeding on fox so lion here becomes tertiary consumer. These secondary consumers and tertiary consumers these both consumers are feeding on animals that is why they are called carnivores and this primary consumer is feeding on herbs that is why it is called herbivore. Apart from herbivore and carnivore, some organisms which are called omnivores. These are the organisms which can feed both on plants and animals like human. Human can feed on plant also and animal also. So this was all about consumers and producers. Till now you know that in food chain producers are always at the first trophic level. So here there is producer and consumers are 
at second level third level and last level but there is something called decomposers and which are present at all the trophic levels so let's talk about decomposers decomposers are the organisms which help in decaying of dead organic matter this dead organic matters are uh, the dead part of producers or consumers so basic job of decomposer is to convert this dead organic matter into inorganic form or you can say nutrients these nut nutrients can later be consumed by plants to perform the photosynthesis process and make the food which will eventually reach all organisms through food chain now these decomposers are using two different methods to carry this process of decomposition and based on these two methods decomposers can be divided into two groups what are the two methods first is feeding on detritus and second is convert the detritus into smaller parts by using digestive enzymes so based on these two methods they can be grouped as detritivores or uh, detritivores and saprotroph or fungi or bacteria these detritivores are basically feeding on detritus or dead organic matter by feeding on they are ingesting all nutrients and excreting in organic form some of the classical example would be earthworm millipede and slugs so what detritivores are doing they are basically feeding on detritus that is how they are helping in decomposition whereas these fungi and bacteria so they cannot feed or they cannot eat so what they are doing they are releasing some digestive enzymes and these digestive enzymes are converting this detritus or dead organic matter into small particles or small molecules which can later be consumed or absorbed by bacteria or fungi through their cell walls and which will eventually be converted into inorganic form or nutrients so this was all about decomposers but there are some organisms which look similar to detritivores but they are not exactly detritivores they are called scavengers so what exactly scavengers are doing scavengers are not considered as decomposers some people get confused between scavengers and detritivores so let me tell you detritivores are totally different from scavengers classical example for scavengers would be hyenas vulture or crow so what these scavengers are doing and where exactly do they come into picture the process of decomposition is started by scavengers so scavengers are the one who initiate the process of decomposition they actually consume the large portion of dead organic matter and from there dead organic matter will be broken down into small particles now decomposers come into picture and detritivores will feed on these small particles as nutrients and bacteria and fungi will secrete digestive enzymes on these small particles and converted into molecules which can later be absorbed by fungi and bacteria so that is the entire process or entire cycle of decomposition which is started by scavengers though they are not decomposers and later will be finished or completed by detritivores and fungi and bacteria